Welcome to Soul Busy. I'm Rach. And I'm Carly, your CEO and COO sisters. We share unfiltered convo on balancing hustle with mindfulness while running successful businesses with soul and and the the real life between it all. Am I psychic or am I a psycho? A psycho. (laughs) (laughs) I personally think psychic. Well, that's not a good thing, though. I'm joking. In this scenario. No, in this scenario. It's a horrible thing. I do believe I'm a psychic, which pays into the issue of am I a psychic or psycho topic today. Intrusive thoughts. Mm. A difficult topic. This is my topic. This is the topic for you. This is the topic for me. Mm. I've lived a long time with intrusive thoughts. Why is it the topic for you, Rarla? I just struggled with this for a while, but I also overcame a little bit of it too, which is, which is a nice treat. Yeah, I do remember you used to struggle a lot more with this and like, I think it tormented you. You almost like used to keep your intrusive thoughts to yourself and then like to mom. Mm. And then like, I think you felt guilty about Sometimes your intrusive thoughts. Sometimes I still thoughts. don't tell people them because then I think they become real. Well, that's a topic I wanted to talk about today that always troubles me as a spiritual person. Having a, I never had intrusive thoughts before, but now I do as a mom and I had to learn how you to never cope had with them. them previous to motherhood. I did not. No. You're a lucky girl. I guess I am because I I, I never experienced how awful it was. Um, but yeah, no, I, it wasn't something I ever experienced. And as a spiritual person, I do believe what you speak, what you think, becomes you. Which I used to want to kill you when you would say that. I, you used to get really mad at me, like mm-hmm. really mad at me over that. Well, it's funny because all everybody's perspective on this has to be so like varied because moms are probably a huge part of this. But what about the people who aren't moms who have these issues? Absolutely. And that's me. I'm not a mom. And I'm sure they'll double when I turn one. So. I did a shit ton of research on this topic last night and over the last few weeks. And at, in my postpartum journey, I also did extensive amounts of research on this. So while we aren't, you know, psychiatrists, we are, I think we both experienced it in different ways. So or I think we're real people that actually experienced it. Yeah. Well, real people, but in terms of like, kind of like how to solve it mm. and stuff too, I did a, Oh, take it easy. Lolly. I did some research on like how, and did, I actually spoke to a few different people that I know that are in the field of psychology in some way or another and asked them their opinion. So I'll kind of wrap on that. But the, the way I wanted to start this, you know, today is all about intrusive thoughts. Am I a psychic or am I a psycho? I did a poll on Instagram and I asked a bunch of people, like I said, and I would say 10 out of 10 of the people that I asked, whether they were a mom or not, told me that they did experience intrusive thoughts at one time or another. Mm -hmm. And all of the moms, every mom that I spoke to told me that this is something that they deal with daily and it's a very difficult challenge for them. And I found that very interesting. I wonder why, I mean, it's probably because your love just like exemplifies when you have a child or when you're carrying a child for nine months and then you give it, but I'm saying it exact, it's exaggerated, exaggerated, but I wonder why it's interesting to me to know that people didn't have it previously to motherhood. And then when they had their children, motherhood, it happened because I can't unsee the fact that it's happened to me my whole life. I think I've been able, you know, I'm, I, meditate to be my own therapist. I talk to myself out loud about these things. I look in the mirror, I ask myself, why are you experiencing that? Why are you thinking that? Why did that run through your head? Um, In postpartum for me, I had one birth that was pretty textbook and another that was a little bit more traumatic. Sadie's was a bit more traumatic for me. I did not experience as many intrusive thoughts on my first birth as I did on my second. I didn't know if there was a correlation. I found out that there is a thing called, you know, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, but a form of postpartum anxiety is like a, a little twinge of OCD where you like you I, get these thoughts. I literally was just going to say that. And I think for me, something I told myself often was that as love increases, fear increases. And that was what I was able to, how I was able to rationalize the thoughts coming into my mind more because I wanted to know why. Why am I thinking these thoughts? That was, I think, something you or mom had said to me during like me kind of like going through this phase of these intrusive thoughts. And I've definitely have like ranges and I've had different um, like timelines of intrusive thoughts. I don't know if it was because I got older or like my life was changing or like my love was changing for people. I think it's your love was changing. Yeah. First of all, you love very deeply. We all do, right? Like we really love our family. And like, I think 
fear of loss is a big part of intrusive thoughts. Yeah. You know, like what if this happened? What what would what would I do? You know? Well, yeah, but like, but also what would piss me off about this feelings that I would have is like the whole version of this psychic or psycho is like sometimes I would think things and then they would happen. And then I'd be like, wait, what? Did I just like make that happen? Did I know that was going to happen? Am I a psychic or am I am a psycho? Am I psycho? Am I, do I want those things to happen? Right. Like the guilt, like, do I subconsciously want that to happen? Am so I fucked up? Say, I knew I had OCD when I was younger because I would knock on wood seven times every time I thought something. Right. And that like the repetitive, the, I had to, and I had to knock on the wood. I had to do it. If I did the knock wrong, I would have to redo the knock mm. seven times. If I did eight knocks on the, Self on the wood, I would, I, if, or if I felt like it wasn't good enough, I didn't cancel it out. So I had to do it again. And it was obsessive. I get that. It was awful. It was, it was, I still do it sometimes now. I do it too. But I think as I grew older and understood what I was doing, I, I, you really got to like control your brain. Like that's the only way you can get out of it yeah. is like you have to tell yourself so many times that it's not real for yourself to believe it. I think I sent you something last night that your subconscious brain is so I powerful. I actually didn't get a chance to watch that and I wanted to. It was talking about your subconscious brain and how like most people think with their brain, but like also their subconscious brain. Their intuition. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of fucks people up because- It's funny you say that because the next topic I wanted to bring up was- intuition, like that whole aspect of thinking you're a psychic, the intuition of, wow, do I, do I actually, am I predicting this? Am I predicting that this is going to happen because I'm intuitive and I'm in tune with what mm. I think could happen or, or am I just projecting a fear is a big difference. 99.9% .9 of the time I like to think actually a hundred percent of the time I like to think I'm projecting a fear because it makes me feel better. And then I just, can sleep at night. Like I used to have these thoughts when I would go to bed and I'd have the same thought about mom every night, every single night, same thought. It would be like the happiest time of my life. I'd go to bed. I'd think this thought and it wasn't a good thought. It wasn't a fun thought. And as I grew up and actually Erica Polsonelli helped me with this, with the cancel clear, I was like, cancel clear, cancel clear, cancel clear. Every time it came to my brain and I stopped thinking it and cancel clear is a really helpful tool. Well, yeah, it just, it, I was controlling my brain. I was like, you're not going to think this. You're not going to think this. It's not going to be something you think about. It's not going to happen. Like I just, that was the only way I could stop and have peace because it yes, makes you understood. not peaceful. Understood. When I was in the worst of it, I would say after I had Sadie three months after I started to get really severe intrusive thoughts, her arm was limp. She had an injury at birth and I was very worried about her arm and she scared me. Like, I think she scared the shit out of me. I think it just, for a second, I was like shook and I would get these thoughts and then I'd get really frustrated with myself that I was getting these thoughts. Right. And then I was like worried, like you were saying, like I was psychic about the thoughts or that my intuition was coming in. And then like the guilt would kick in. Like, do You're I want bad that person. to happen? Am yeah. I a bad person? So when I did extensive research and like, you know, from that episode of cancel clear, the number one thing that helped me was the concept of replacing the thought mm repetitively. So every time the thought would come into my head, you know, like re on repeat, then I would find another thought that could replace that thought for me continuously to yeah. create a habit around that thought. Yeah. I think because of my personality too, like I struggled a lot with this and I don't know if anyone can relate to this when I was younger. Like I, I think I've said this previously where dad used to say to me, I think you have an angel on one of your shoulders and a devil on the other side of your well, shoulder. Doesn't everybody? And you're not your conscience. And you try to lead with your angel, but your devil's talking to you. Or your devil's talking to you every single time. And you need to shut down the devil like on that side of your brain. And I used to think since my devil talked more that I was evil, that I was like, I'm like an evil person. Is that wild like, what your mind can do when you're just talking right. to yourself? No, it's wild. I've had conversations with myself that are pretty scary. And like, it, it just, it's like sometimes in the car, I'm talking to myself. I'm like, did you just think that? Did you just say that? Do you believe that? It can like, be alarming. It's alarming. It's scary. But I have to say TikTok with like relating to people have, has really helped me that like it's other. so funny you say that. I actually just want, while you go off on that, I want to. Other people's feelings on that or thoughts that they had or like, they're like, um, just 
had a thought that like my child fell down the stairs and like something like that. And I'm like, Oh my God, I mm-hmm. always have those thoughts yep. or, or little things that like people can relate to that. I'm like, Oh my God, I cannot believe other people think that. It's funny you say that because when I had it, my first intrusive thoughts and I was confused at what was happening inside my mind, I went straight to TikTok because it's obviously the rawest platform, the realest mm-hmm. platform. And I found this girl, her name is Anna Lee. She's a mom and she had been, she, honest to God, I sort of was part of my healing journey of these thoughts because I was like, oh my God, other people experience intrusive thoughts. Right. I'm not fucking crazy. But I, you know what I found so sad was the loneliness of thinking I was the only person dealing with these Horrible. thoughts and that made it much worse. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this topic today, because I really feel like if you know, you're not alone it can make it feel a little bit more normal for you and make it better. Yeah. I, what I want to do right now is I, I did a poll on my Instagram yeah. and I said, do you have intrusive thoughts? And if you do, would you mind sharing them with These me? These were great and made me feel like I was on top of the world. I, I well, would just that's like to why state, I want everyone to hear them. And I also would like to state that I genuinely feel like I'm more of a psycho than a psychic. A psycho. I definitely think I'm both a majority of the time. But I also think one thing that's important to take note that we'll talk about later after I read these is that it is possible in energy. And I know this to be true. I don't think this is a theory. I know this is a fact. When you, when you think about something repeatedly, when you put too much energy into something, it can become reality. And that is the part that I will not turn a blind eye to because I do believe in manifesting. You cannot be half spiritual. You have to be full spiritual. So I do believe that you do need to put the work in to solve these thoughts that are running through your mind and you do need, you do need to help yourself heal from them. Yeah. And I think something I had to learn when you said that, it's not like if I think something about mom all the time, like it's going to happen. Like no, I can't, that's not what I'm saying. I can't think like that. That's why I used to get mad at you because I was like, stop saying that because I'm so scared it that scared I'm creating you. it. It yeah. scared you when I said that. I think when you mean that, like for yourself, like if you're not going to try to like solve these thoughts or help yourself in any way, then like, well, I think that the point is, is that I will not allow myself to give in to the thought. Right. And I will not allow myself to keep thinking it repeatedly. I will find a way to overcome the strength in my mind to think something else. Yeah. And it's hard. It's It's really really hard. Hard. And I I haven't mastered it. I'm still dealing with it. So what I want to do is just read what some people responded to on my Instagram about their thoughts. It's I've had all, all of them. Uh, me dying while alone with my kids and seeing them both crying, trying to wake me up. That's horrible. I've had that thought. I hate that thought. That fucking thought sucks. Getting diagnosed with I'm something not terrible. Lie. I'm not going to lie. I do think about that with my dog. With your dogs, like, I'm what like, would you what do? would they do? Getting diagnosed with something terrible, myself or my kids, uh, that's happened to me too. I've thought about that thought, like, same, shields up. Terrible, shields up. Being a mom, thinking, what if something really bad were to happen to me? What would I do with my baby? I think, you know what I think th- those thoughts are? When you become a mom, and there's a lot of moms responding to this, you Definitely. get a, you have a new sense of responsibility where you must. It is your job, your lifelong forever job to take care of the little being that just left your body. And so that sense of responsibility, I think, makes you afraid that what if you were in a scenario where you were unable to to handle that? Scary. It's a very scary thought because you feel fully responsible for their life. It's not like your child could just like get up walking by itself and feed itself a banana. No. Like it's, it's not the same. All of the ways my house could hurt my infant and dying while watching my kids alone. So that's happened now twice. Um, the house could hurt. I get completely. I've had many thoughts of the stairs. Mm. The stairs scare me very, very much. I am constantly thinking about the staircase. Yeah. Like those like minuscule mistakes that you don't think about that could like be detrimental. Those are awful. The news is not helpful to people who have intrusive thoughts. I, I, that's why I don't watch the news. Not because I don't want to be informed, but because I find it's not good for my mental health. It's not either. I used to say to Joe, I feel like I can't use toothpaste anymore. Yeah. It, it's very dangerous. I think it's just too much. Um, that something will be wrong with our unborn baby, even though every single test has been okay. Uh, someone comes up behind me while putting my kids in the car, knocks me out dead and then takes them away from me. And I never see them again. I think about that at night. That is a terrible thought. I have the chills. That's cancel clear for every thought, cancel clear shields up for every thought, for every person who thought this and everything I'm saying, um, there are too many to list. This person went not, you know, postpartum or motherhood, but she says that she constantly just can't stop thinking she's ugly. That's horrible. I know. It's terrible. Um, I think about everything going wrong with my toddler. I have extreme postpartum intrusive thoughts. 
pretty much that whatever I desire it will not work out for me and that the worst will always yeah. happen. The worst case will always happen. Health fears, getting super sick or someone I love getting sick, thoughts of people I love dying, uh, thoughts that I'm not good enough. I don't like this person and feeling okay with not needing to explain why. I'm not, I don't understand that one. Um, I'm a mom of three kidnapped at daycare, one of them getting cancer, et cetera. The list could go on for days. Cancel clear. Cancel clear. Shields up. If I carried my daughter down the stairs, I'd drop her on her head and she would shatter. So a lot a of the mom pieces. things. I, I think I saw one too that I found interesting. That's like separate from like the fear of love or fear, fear of death or like fear of like someone getting diagnosed with something like not getting to where you want to be. That was something I used to do yes. all the time where, and like mom always like, sends it back to me after I get the thing that I want, where it was like, I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to find the love of you my life. You always did that. I'm not going to go to the school I want to go to. You always I'm believed not gonna you have never going to get it. Yeah. I'm going to have, and she was like, literally, I can't even talk to you because you've every had single everything. time you've had everything. But I think the people who are feeling those moments, I, I resonate when you say, if you're going to manifest that, then it's not going to happen. Like you have to flip the narrative for those type of things. The things that are in your control. Right. Like those, those intuitive thoughts that are coming in and you can control it, then do something about it. I agree. You know, because for yeah. me, that's different. An intrusive thought. Well, these you, are painful. I understand that these are very painful. A hundred percent. And I appreciate everyone who responded and was like super vulnerable to say that because. So appreciate That's really hard. I, I, I have had all of those I'll feelings. finish. Let me finish these. That the world would be better off without me. Someone wrote. I mean, and that's pretty intense. Um, I've thought. I, I, I think in times of lowness, I've, I've thought that before. That's so sad. Not in a, in a way that like to feel bad, just like, I'm like, Ugh, this is going wrong. Like, you know, all those rains it pours moments. And then you're like, wait, what? The world would suck without me. <laughs> I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and OCD after my second baby. I find that interesting after her second baby thoughts of my family, um, love so being much. sick. You love so much. I was convinced that someone was going to climb into my house and steal my infant from her crib. That's horrible. Those movies, movies will do it to you too. Also OCD intrusive thoughts on cleanliness of my house with germs and my kids oh. was another one that somebody said. Germs definitely are up there for me like um, on airplanes. Yeah, it's tough. So to go into let's, so obviously, okay, we've determined that everyone has them right? We've determined this is common. We've determined that whoever's listening to this, if you're shaking your head, nodding in the car, wherever you're listening, you're not alone. Mm. So like we're here with you, but we can now discuss, let's go to the positive. Let's go to the solve. Let's go to how we fix it. I spoke to our aunt Irene is a, I, I always get this wrong. A psychologist, a psychiatrist. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be offensive. I don't know the difference. Um, but one of those and I said, what's your advice for your patients when they tell you they have intrusive thoughts? I'm just going to read to you what she said in a text. She said, simply put, you cannot believe everything you think. Sometimes our emotional thoughts need rational supervision. Our emotional thoughts are based on simple fears. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't let your mind wander. Sometimes it's too little to go out by itself. One more thought for the psychic part of your topic. People can create self-fulfilling prophecies. They think something is going to happen. So they start acting in a way as if it's already happening. And then they actually bring that to reality. That's what you're talking about. That's exactly what yeah. I'm talking about. Um, Works for positive and negative thoughts. I also asked another friend, Victoria Papas. She is a marriage counselor, but has a background. Uh, she's also a psychologist, has a background in psychology. Um, I said, what do you tell your patients? She said, I basically process and process and process it with them breaks down the thought into small little fragments. Mm, and I get to know the intrusive thought so well with the client that they can respond back to the thought from a balanced place of ration. And then I reflect on how the person is managing their stress or their anxiety. If certain coping strategies are not working for them, we can then work together to adjust them and circle back on how the person is functioning in their life. And eventually the intrusive thoughts don't feel so powerful and the client is no longer afraid of them. Yeah. I used to think that... Um like what would solve it for me would be like to distract myself. Ignore it. That is not the solve. No. Um, I'm going to tell you that right now because even in the happiest of days and the happiest of moments or like getting excited for like a fun thing that I'm about to do, right when I get into the car, it's like an automatic blinking light in my brain of let me ruin this day for you. It's kind of also like 
you know how it's like, don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. I'm thinking, thinking about, about it. it. <laughs> it's like, it's like that. It's like you want your mind to not think about something and then your mind's thinking about something, which is why I love the concept of replacing the thought with something more positive. And I also do love and respect this advice here of meeting the thought where it is and then being inquisitive, right? Because it's, there's something, so I was talking to my friend, I'm going to keep her name undisclosed. She's dealing with some postpartum uh, anxiety right now and she's seeing a psychologist about it. And what we were, she was explaining to me what she was feeling. And she told me that she does something called fortune telling. She prompted herself to say, are you fortune telling or is there something logical happening here? And I, I asked her for what the piece of information was that was given to her in that situation. And, and she was given a list from this book. She was reading this book. Let me uh, find the book for you guys. So the book is called The Pregnancy and Postpartum Anxiety Workbook. And one of the pages in this book uh, listed 10 different cognitive distortions is what they're called. There's actually a name for this. This isn't like, we're not like Made making up. it up. Yeah. This is very real. Um, so all or nothing thinking. You force experiences into one of two extremes, black or white categories, such as this is good or this is bad. This is perfect or it's completely wrong. Um, so that's one cognitive distortion. Another is an overgeneralization. You make broad global inferences, inferences based on just a few events. If the word always and never appear in your vocabulary, you may be overgeneralizing. Mm. So saying that this could what never happen. What does fortune tell in, telling mean, I think? I'm going to get to oh. it. There's a bunch. I just don't want to miss the other ones because I think everyone might identify with different things here. Mental filtering. You focus on one or a few negative aspects of a situation and allow them to spoil the entire thing. So, you know, this part sucks, so everything sucks. Mm. Um, overestimating the threat. You take a situation that involves slight or no risk and make it seem threatening and dangerous in your mind. That's interesting. That's sort of like the game we were talking about. If I don't the get the diaper game. in the hole. Um, catastrophic thinking. You view a minor setback as horrible, awful, or truly terrible. The next one is fortune telling on the topic. You make ironclad predictions about dire things happening in the future is what that says. But it sounds like if you're saying that, you're saying you want, that's what was fucking me up is that if fortune telling, telling means fortune telling, the fortune telling means that I want that to happen. Cause typically when you have a fortune or like you go to a fortune teller, you want to find out those things that are going to happen to you. You're implying that your subconscious wants the thing that you're fortune telling yeah. to happen. Yeah. So, but like, why is it called that? Cause isn't fortune telling meaning, meaning like it's going to happen. I think if let's, Let's, I'll read the rest of this list after we complete this thought, but let's break down a thought really quickly. Like, um, something really bad is going to happen to someone you love, right? Mm -hmm. If you break down that thought, the obvious response when you speak it out loud is that you don't want that, right? Like you would never want that. Yeah. But now my subconscious brain is saying I do. Okay. So your subconscious brain is saying you do want something bad to happen to someone you love. Mm -hmm. Now answer me the question. Let's break it down together live. Why? would you ever want something bad to happen to someone you love? I wouldn't. Could you give me a rational answer? No. Okay, so do you really love the person that you're thinking of? Mm -hmm. How deeply? A lot. Like, would it break you to your core if something did happen to that person? Mm -hmm. How deeply would it break you to your core? I'd be miserable. You wouldn't feel like you could function. Mm -hmm. Does that thought of not feeling like you could function scare you? Mm -hmm. Do you think that sometimes the opposite of a fear or something scaring you would be like extreme love. Every single, now that I know that I, that makes me feel better every single time. So I tell myself that. Right. Which is, so it makes me feel better. So you admit that, that you have extreme love for the person you're thinking of. Totally. Like the, the utmost love, right? When you find something that makes you feel out sound or at peace, it works. But then, but I want to finish the point. Do you have those thoughts about anyone else that you don't have extreme love for? No. So there's a direct correlation to extreme love and extreme fear. Yeah, it's only specific people. And some people that I do love, I don't have those thoughts about. So saying you have extreme love, though, for this one individual that might you might have in your mind means that what you're really saying subconsciously is that you fucking love this person so, 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 so much. You want the best for the people you love, right? Mm -hmm. You want them to thrive. You want them to live the longest life that they can. Always. You want to be around them forever and always. So in my 
gut, I would say that you should replace that thought every time you think the thought that just ran through your mind of that fear of that individual, I would then replace that thought or meet that thought, match it with, wow, it's so funny that ran through my mind. I, it must just mean my love for that person is deepening. It's typically what I do. It's growing. I'll just literally say to myself, it's love, it's love, it's love. It's not real. It's love. It's a deep love. You, it's a constant battle. It doesn't, for some people, I hope it does end. I hope it goes away. But for me, I haven't been able to get there yet. I think the other thing too on this topic is that the whole concept of intuition, right? Like the the, the psychic part of it all. Like, am I a psychic? Am, am I, is this going to happen? Because I, I, I'm in tune, so intuitive that I know this will happen. You know what I mean? And, and, and when that does happen for things that I did know, then I'm like, oh my God, all the other things you thought are happening. And then I torture myself into this like tornado of torture to like make me think that like I'm powerful. I don't want to sound like a broken record or the annoying person that always says meditate, meditate. But I will say for me, I have noticed a direct correlation, you know, as a mom, there's less time to meditate. I have to definitely carve out more intentional time to have that meeting with myself if I don't have the meeting with myself and I don't take the time to filter my thoughts and clear my mind, I find these thoughts are exaggerated and extremely intense. If I do take the time to meditate, which is where the motivation comes from for me to, to meditate and clear my mind, I find that they're far less and that they're healed in a way because I'm able to rationalize, but I'm also, it's almost for me, like I'm able to sort my thoughts, look at them like almost on a whiteboard and then just be like, this isn't real. It's yeah. not real. I get that. It For me, it depends who I'm with. That's the thing. Or like what we're doing. Or like Thanksgiving, I have those thoughts. Like they're like... Carly, that makes so much sense. Ex- yeah, no, I'm just telling you. It's just how it is for me. We love Thanksgiving. Yeah. And everyone we love is at Thanksgiving. I know. Leland's coming to Thanksgiving this year. It's going to be great. <laughs> Leland has not come ever since we've invited her one time. She's coming this year. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, okay. Uh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I know it makes sense, but sometimes it doesn't make sense. And then sometimes I can control it and sometimes I can't. Yeah, but I'm going to spit back at you something that's annoying to say. When you flex a muscle, the muscle gets stronger. Meditation is a muscle. It's a practice. It's something you build on. It layers. It's not, I meditate one time and I'm okay. there's There's something called meditating on something. When something's bothering me or something's intrusive in my mind, I need to take the time to repetitively, on repeat, go back to the thought and ask myself why I need to meet the thought where it is in my mind. Isn't that what therapy is? Meeting the thought with somebody else? You're, you know, having a reflection, getting, being able to see it as it is. I think you're getting validation from somebody else when you're saying you can sometimes get it from yourself. Uh, You can always get it from yourself if you just take the time to do it. But this is why carving out the time for meditation, peaceful practices, nature, being grounded is important. Working out too has been helpful to me. Like just going to the gym and having like mindfulness with your body that has always helped me in this past year. It's interesting I that you say that. I've never found that working out actually to be a meditative practice for me. I don't why? know why. I know that's really funny. I find it to be uh, very intriguing to be strong. That's my motivation of that. Like I love feeling tight and strong and like I think it's the toned. vibe and maybe because I never used to do it, maybe that could be it. But it's like getting my outfit on, even if it's like, I don't wear those like cute aloe outfits. Don't worry. Like I just not, got an aloe they're outfit. They're not cool. All about it. Um, walking in the gym, having my full water, putting my music in. Like I like to put it's Drake. It's a ritual. Yeah. Like I put Drake in like thinking I'm cool and like I'm like lifting weights Why thinking does Drake I'm cool. Drake make you feel cool? Love Drake. It's my I, favorite. When I got my new I played car Justin last Bieber. week, I played Drake. It was the first song I played because I was like, I want to feel cool. Like in my, in my car. He's cool. I, I guess is he just has a vibe. Yeah, I don't know. But like, I think it's more just like, again, like I was saying, it distracts me. I'm doing something differently. So like, I, I'm not thinking about these thoughts and I'm not just sitting there being like, these are the thoughts I'm thinking. Yeah. But there was a time when I was so deeply alone in my intrusive thoughts in my postpartum era, which I went, it was a, the time I thought no one else had these and I was crazy. Like I was <clears> losing <throat> my mind. I really thought I was losing my mind at well, one I point. Well, I never told you because I thought you didn't have it. Um, I... Mine were very directly related to birth. Yeah. So for me, I was like, no one had the birth I had. No one's going to relate to what I'm talking about. I shouldn't talk about them out loud. It means it will happen if I talk about them out loud. I'm crazy. 
And, you know, I don't want anyone to think I'm crazy. So I just kept it to myself. So I, you know, that's okay. That's not something to pity. I'm very good at self-soothing and coping. So, and I'm good at researching. So I like, I'm always fine. And I really mean that. So what I did is I went deep into meditations and I actually did a specific search on a meditation for intrusive thoughts. Cause to me, I, you can always find something specific. Words can heal. And I found one, we talked about this on a previous episode that related intrusive thoughts to leaves in a pool and the, the subconscious or your ability to heal that intrusive thought is the pool vacuum. And basically visualizing is a very powerful meditational tool. It's something I use often, but you basically envision the pool. I'll repeat it again. Like I did on a previous episode, you envision the pool and the pool is filled with dirty leaves and the dirty leaves that keep falling in, you just keep taking them out and you visualize the leaf as the thought and you just keep taking the leaf out of the pool with the pool vacuum and eventually you want to visualize at the end of the meditation that your pool is a a crystal clear beautiful blue flowing rippling pool they say when you submerge an empath in water they have the ability to heal faster which is i think probably why we all love bathtubs so much i I definitely can heal myself in a bathtub bathtub. it cleanses your aura cleanses your energetic field it gives you the ability to kind of like start fresh on what's surrounding you the energy that's lingering I do think that that holistic practices can help with these things significantly or therapy. I was therapy. just going to say my advice for anyone is you have to you have to stick with it. Like they do go away. Like I they change and then I have a, a new victim every single time. Mm. My victim they changes. Morph. Yeah, but I I think Every single time I've done the cancel clear, I've done that not true, not true, or just like talking to myself or it's love or like I found the reason why I was doing it, finding your why or the reason I'm why. so glad you said that because I do think, you know, let's talk about logic for a second. There's also fears. The logical lady. There's fears that can come from a logical fear. Yeah. Right? Like I'm afraid this could happen because I've seen this happen is something that you also need to be intelligent there's ways to clear that with a logical response. Like, so you do have to be proactive in action, I think, too. If you find something that could make you feel okay, like I'm worried about, for example, I just booked myself or I'm trying to book myself a full body MRI scan. For me, I find it to be very relaxing, the concept of knowing that I've had my insides looked at. I love that. I want that. I want a preventative blood panel with Geraldine. I'm doing it. I just texted her this morning. I want to know. I want peace of mind. I don't think that something's wrong, but you know, family history is a thing and it is something you have to look at. So do I want to know that my heart's in good shape, that my organs are in good Yeah, I want to know that. So that's a logical thought that's run through my mind. Leland, who's, you know, our director of communications and the producer of this podcast sitting in this room. Her and I talked about that this weekend and we're like, are we getting old or is this just fun? Are we just afraid? Like, what is it? Afraid. And, and we both were like, no, it's, it's, it's just a relax. It's also responsible though, to book a full body MRI. It's, it's responsible. I'm not saying everyone should do that, but I am saying <coughs> if you have a fear, if you have a worry, if you have an intrusive thought, I think it's a, do it's it. a fear though. It, it's, you can say it's responsible, but it's, it's stemming it that way? from a fear. It's smart. Leland said, no, no, the hol- earlier you can detect something, the better. Holistically, I agree. Like if you're just, because I've come from a place of ignoring medical things where I'm like, let me ignore this. And then it turns for the worse, truthfully. So it's not smart. He said, if you have an intrusive thought, you can <laughs> lay that thought to rest. Do it. We've, we've asked Leland to come on the podcast. She will not come. But she's clearly, a very, she'll, she'll give you random answers very, from the side that are good. She's very smart and she's been through a lot of trauma. And I think that one thing I've taken away, I think Leland can just, you can handle anything. I said it to my mom this morning. I said, that girl couldn't handle anything that comes her way because you're, you're very sound in your mind and you're very, you've taught me a lot about that. You're very good at coping, self-soothing, but finding the answer so that you can move on. I think she's also good at, um, and I think us three share this, which is why I think we kind of gravitate towards each other is that like, there's no, there's no way we're not doing something. We're not getting through something. Uh, there's no uh, way. Yes. No one. Yes. If we get a no, we're pivoting. If we. Yes. There's just if something comes our way. Like we're solving it. Like it's just it's there's just no other answer. Well, we have a joke amongst the three of us. You know, again, if I'm sure you all know Leland, if you're listening to this, but Leland was actually the first employee that I ever hired um, in a small 300 square foot space. Leland was one of the first people to ever believe in this concept with us. And 
we have, we, when Carly says we all share it, we've worked together now for 10 plus years and we know each other on personal, professional levels. We've been through so much together, right? We always look at each other and we're like, everything's fine. We have this ongoing joke. Everything's fine. I don't even know what's not fine. We joke that, right? Yeah. And, and it's like, everything is always fine because we make it fine. Yeah. But I do think it ties back to the psychic versus psycho thought because that, you know, shit in life can happen, right? And, and it will. And that this conversation is not saying it won't. You have yeah. to be realistic and logical about those things. But again, to the point of the solve of it all, what are you doing to meet the thought and to solve the thought yeah. and to soothe the thought? Well, for me, I used to share that thought, like everything's always fine for my work life, but I would ignore my personal life and be like, yeah, it's whatever. Like it's just, you're not really doing anything with it. You're not helping yourself with right. things. You're ignoring it. And, and as I started getting older within my work life, I wanted to conjoin it with my personal life. And I think people typically, it's like a scale. They either go heavy on their work life and forget about their personal life or vice versa. But like, if they both rise together, you're kind of unstoppable. You're going to laugh at my response to you, but this is why I love Google Cal. I know that that's so weird and girl. so random. An odd girl. But this is why I make my Google Calendar personal and professional. It's one thing. It's my way of work-life balance because it means that I always have time for it all. Mm -hmm. And I love to look at the snapshot of my week and know exactly where I have personal self-care and where I have professional development. And that I love knowing there's a time and a place for, both. for all the things I need to soothe, you know? Um and I love knowing Tuesday mornings is my time to really clear my mind, like, and do a really long, deep meditation. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're longer. I do like the routine of the week, like us knowing like what's happening monthly, quarterly, oh, yeah. daily. It's, it's like very healthy. I'm like, okay, it's Tuesday. I'm prepared for this Tuesday. Like, I know what's happening today. Like, I love that. Why are you laughing? Clapped. I, no, I'm laughing at Mike actually because I have been in my own personal routine uh, alongside the work routine. I've been doing this thing where I keep. Um, my Monday morning is always weightlifting. My Thursday morning is always weightlifting really early. And then Tuesday morning is always deep mind work. Monday afternoon is always deep computer work. It's, it's always the same. And he's been observing me silently. I didn't know. And he like was inquisitive yesterday and was like, so I have some questions about your routine. I'm done with him. And I just thought it was really funny that he was like observing me doing it, but I was actually proud of myself because it meant the person that could check me the most saw that I was keeping consistency with those things. So like I, I, we're going to do an episode about routines, but I do think that routines are a good solve to the unknown. Yeah. You know, like maybe organizing your thoughts. Well, yeah, no, it's, there are good and bad things to a distraction, not a distraction, but like a, a, he, a healing practice. Yeah. Like a, a, a practice or, but I'm, I'm going to say the word distraction of like knowing what you're, a plan, a plan, well, if you will. Boredom can lead to, or your mind being too free. No. Boredom is not good for me sometimes. Boredom's terrible. It's not good. And there's a difference between being having free time and being bored too. Yeah. Um, I, well, I want to read the rest of the cognitive distortions just so if anybody didn't feel they resonated with another, that they could resonate with uh, another one here. Should statements, you apply rigid, absolute rules to yourself and others about how things should and shouldn't be. That sounds like the games. That's a cognitive distortion. Well, What's funny about that, and I think I was explaining this to someone yesterday with me and Joe, is I'm, I'll pass on like my feelings to him and I'll be like, if you don't do this, this is going to happen mm -hmm. and you need to do it right now. And he'll like laugh at me and I'll get like super angry because I'll be like, I need you to do it. Or like my brain is like never going to let it go. Can you and give me an example. I'm not sure. I, no, I don't say them out loud. Okay. Sorry. So you have like a. Okay. For example. Thought. I'll do a stupid one where I'll be like, okay, if I, if Joe doesn't hold my hand for three seconds or open the door for me when I ask him to, my dress, my brand new dress is going to get orange juice all over it and get ruined. Like wow. something stupid. Wow, 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 wow. That's, and, that's and in your head. That's not the actual thing that I'm thinking. I'm thinking way worse things. But if he doesn't do it and abide by the rule, then it's like, okay, somebody, it's going to happen. You, okay, so you are making a rule. You're making I a, think that's what I'm doing. It's a cognitive yeah. distortion. It's a should statement. It's a rule. Yeah, it's a rule. That's interesting. Okay, so. Is it though? Or is it miserable? Um, I think what I've learned from Ram Das, a guru I follow, is it's very important to say that's interesting. Mm. It's important to observe and say that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. So don't buy into it too much. You I know? think it also comes from my personality too, which don't like you love that Leland. Isn't that freeing? That's interesting. 
what's freeing is when you're on a plane and look down and you can't you're see anything. Small. I love that. Okay, then No, but I want to say something okay, about yes, that. Okay, yes, Carly. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I think it comes from my personality of being like a Tasmanian devil when I'm younger because I'm like, I didn't show love as I, I would want to. I don't know if anyone to. listening is going to know what it meant that you were a Tasmanian devil. Explain. Sure, I will. I gladly. Carly. It was a nightmare. When she was little, you were just intense. Yeah. You weren't like, you weren't politically correct. You weren't polite. Fuck it. You would be like, we would be, it was almost embarrassing. Yeah. Like you, you almost needed an announcement on your behavior mm-hmm. before someone could get to know you. I remember constantly having to explain to your camp counselors, I said this during your oh, wedding well. speech, that you weren't a bully. It was just love. You were just, this how you showed love. And it was, as I, yeah. I, I knew that to be true, but I knew that it was hard for other people but to understand. But I'm saying to you, like how I showed love would give me anxiety because I didn't think people understood me, which then when I got older gave me an anxiety because I'm like, oh my God, people don't get me. And then guilt, I'm like, oh my, Carly. it is, no, it's, it's, it's all guilt. If you, un, if you unpack it all, that's exactly what it is. Well, but like take, I think, I think you did this with Harvey K. Mm-hmm. I think you did it with Harvey K. Like you never like gave him that much attention, right? Or like I you, loved him. You loved him, yeah. but you like were you guys had like he was dying. You were mean to him. He was dying, yeah. and I remember mom explaining this to you. Like when he died, you're gonna be sad. You were there. You had like this guilt, or like you had this fear, mm-hmm. like that you weren't good to him, or that you weren't, or all these things, right? I think it's because it was linked to behavior that you either labeled as right or wrong you know, your subconscious was like feeling a sense totally. of guilt. It's so annoying. It's tormenting. Yeah, it's tormenting. Um, all right, let's keep tormenting. reading these cognitive detor- distortions. What if thinking, you ask what if about bad things happening in the future? What if this bad thing mm. was to happen? What would I do? Discounting your coping skills, you tell yourself that you can't cope with problems or difficulties. So that's all of the cognitive distortions that are listed in this book. And you're supposed to kind of just circle which ones resonate with you. Something I find very interesting about all of the cognitive distortions, a common denominator I find, and again, broken record, language, Mm -hmm. self-language, verbal language, body language. What are you saying to yourself on repeat? And how are you, what are you saying in response to the thought? What are you saying in response to your emotion? How are you self-regulating is language. What's that quote? Like if you're in the future, you're not in the present. Lao Tzu. If you are thinking about, if you're anxious, you're thinking about the past. No, excuse me. Don't if just you're, go Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. If you're depressed, you're thinking about the past. If you are anxious, you're thinking about the future. And if you're at peace, you're in the present. Mm, that hits hard. It hits hard every time you hear it in a different way. because And when you experience that, right? I was feeding Sadie a bottle last night. And when I was doing it, I was thinking about this podcast because I felt anxious. I hadn't. I didn't have time to prepare. My day plowed over me. I, I came home, you know, I went home to the girls. I was, I was taking care of them. And I was like, wait, wait, wait when am I going to prepare for this? And so I, I found myself spiraling and having intrusive thoughts of like, oh, it's not going to be a good one because mm-hmm. I'm not going to have time to prepare. And then I looked at my baby who was sucking her bottle with the most beautiful eyes. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not looking at her. I'm not being present. And then I felt everything leave my body. And all I did was just come back to the moment. And I, and I said to myself, this, these thoughts don't matter. Just this gotta, is so stupid. You have to be your own best friend in those way, in those moments though. Cause like you have to bring yourself back. You really like, it's just, you have to control yourself. Presence, and, presence. And something that I had to learn and something mom really, really taught me. And I used to have fear of her not being able to tell me like, go back to reality and kind of shut the fuck up. Cause like, I love that about mom. She'd be like, nope, not going to happen. And when mom thinks something's going to happen, I get even more anxious because I'm like, wait, you always say it's not going to happen. What are you talking about? It's going to happen. Or like she gets anxious and then I'm like, wait, wait, what are you talking about? She's my my go-to person for that. And like I I used to get fear of like her not being, her, no one getting me but her. But my my point was saying is like I, to her, I used to fear the unknown, the unknown, the unknown. Well, it's funny because I called mom last night and I said, what's your thoughts on this topic? Have you experienced this? You know, she's my voice of reason. Yeah. She was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I've experienced that. And I said, well, what have you experienced? She was like, fear of loss, fear of dying. Everyone thinks that that's what is going to happen, right? You're afraid of the worst case scenario. A phrase I like to say to myself often is, show me how good it can get. Show me the best case scenario. That's a a way I meet my intrusive thought. 
And then something dad used to say to me, which they're pretty opposite in the way that they are or the way they think. He's like, well, what if it does happen? And I'd be like, interesting. That's an interesting perspective. You're right. Right. So what if the worst case scenario happens? Right. Like he, I think he used to say something of that sort, like something like what if, and what if it does? Or like, what, what if it does rain on your wedding day? He used to say that to me, it's still going to be beautiful. I actually really value that perspective too, because that also helps meet an intrusive thought where it is. Yeah. You know, um, well, so what I wrote from mom that she said, fear of the unknown is just a waste of time and energy, Rachel. Is, is it Rachel? Rachel. Fear of the unknown is just a waste of time and energy. Everything is unknown. You're not yeah. a psychic. You know, you're not a psychic. I personally sometimes think I'm a psychic when it comes to text messages. That's the one way I can truly say I'm a psychic. Every single time I think about someone, they then text me. It is the weirdest thing, especially I hate that with Leland. I don't know what it is. I can't. But even, that's not even fair because Leland's no, always texting. No, that's you. not true. That literally, I get to no, wake up from a text true. from Leland every it's day. It's not true. It, I am telling you that it is too much, too many times for it to just be a coincidence. That's happened to me too, though. I know that there's. It happened dur during pregnancy. It's when I it started for me. But there are just some people that I'll be like, oh. They're but I don't like me. those moments. Look down and sometimes. they're texting me. I don't like those. Well, because it think validates it, thinking it, you are just, a psychic. It's just a never-ending battle. That it's I, a loop. It, it really is. But I actually really enjoyed this conversation. I am glad to hear that because I think I think that the point of today's conversation is everyone has them. Yeah. Everyone has fears. Everyone has deep-rooted love. Everyone has things that they don't want to happen. No one wants anything to happen to their baby. It's okay to be cautious. It's okay to have them. I think the question is, what the fuck are you going to do about it, honey? Are you going to let it happen forever? Or are you going to fight it? Fight back. I'm going to fight back on the devil fight on back. my shoulder. Fight the devil on your shoulder. I, and I do think that it's possible to, to heal more from these thoughts. I, said, I texted my group chat last night of all my friends that are moms. And I was like, what's your thought on this? Do you have this? Every single one of them said they have it. They, they had it postpartum. They still have it now. It bothers them, but what they do is they talk back to themselves. My yeah. friends are really good at self-soothing, right? and I'm, I was impressed with that answer. I like that answer, and I also always remind myself to like look back and be like, look at all the things that didn't happen that you thought were going to happen, too. Yeah. And like you have to be great. Oh, yeah. Let's be give the example of those rain moments. on your wedding day. Well, no, it's true. Like I literally became an obsessive no, no. psycho. It was like borderline I think, psychotic. I think AccuWeather, like caught on to me and just like basically sent me updates no, without me even no, no, going. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to take full credit, mm. full credit for changing the weather on your weather day. No, you don't, you're not no, that I'm taking, powerful. I am, take, I am that powerful. I literally said, spirits, guides, and angels, do me a favor. I cannot listen to her for one more fucking second. <laughs> Please just change the weather on the app and the next day the weather changed. And then the next day it changed back to rain, so. And then did it rain on your wedding day? It didn't, no. And so you're welcome. Blessed to be here. You're welcome. Rock out. Um, no, we're not ending the podcast yet. I just want to say this. I think... Rock out. Chicken fingers. I think in conclusion, I think in conclusion, the thing we talk about the most is mental clarity. I think we talk about, you know, the contrast of it all, the sacrifice of it all. Part of the reason that you can enjoy Jomo, you know, the episode before this and, and enjoying missing out on something is the achievement and the reward of your mind being soothed by filling time with self-care yeah. is really what it comes down to. So I think that that's part of this ever evolving point of being in touch with your thoughts, being aware, getting to the root of why, and then trying to self-soothe. And I think that step one is maybe knowing you're not alone, right? Step two is saying, okay, now I can validate myself in knowing that if everybody has these thoughts, then maybe mine aren't real, Yeah, you know? And maybe step three is then finding a, a thought replacement and, and being able to figure out like, what, is there an action I need to take to fix this thought? Or is there a thought I need to replace this thought with or a habit I need to replace this thought with? What can I do to solve? I think something that really worked for me is talking to myself. Like I like creepily talk to myself oh in God. the car sometimes. I had the weirdest experience the other day. Yeah. Talking to yourself? <sighs> Were you talking to yourself? I can't even believe I'm saying this out loud. So I... The other day, you know those pictures you would stare at when you were little where you would adjust your eye, your pupil of your eye to, and then the, the page would lift off. Yeah. I had an outer body experience the other day when I, after I meditated, I think I had gone really deep into a way I hadn't gone in a long time. And I did that in the mirror. 
and I, it's, it was really weird. Like it sticks it out in my mind. I, I got very close to the mirror and I let my eyes dilate differently. And I, my, my uh, face separated from myself. It's creepy. It was really weird. And I was actually able to look at myself as if I wasn't in my body. So I was staring at, at me as a person. And what I did in that moment when I was there, I wanted to stay there, but it was hard to stay there. My mind had to stay present to, to stay in that moment. It was a deep, deep meditation. I was able to talk to myself. And I looked at myself and I was asking myself questions. And I was, I was asking myself, like, are you happy with yourself? Are you happy with where you are? Like, you're happy with how you're spending your time. Are you feeling like the best version of yourself? And I, I, I engaged in a conversation with myself. I must have looked mentally ill. You know, thank God no one walked in at that moment, but I really engaged in this conversation with myself. And after I felt better, yeah. talking to yourself is a tool of therapy. I love talking to myself, especially things I'm embarrassed to tell people. Like there are some things I just don't want to tell people. And I, well, now it's all out there. So anything I've ever thought <laughs> is here. So it doesn't really no matter. Privacy There's anymore. no privacy anymore, but I, I just always love bringing myself back down to earth, being like, what the fuck are you thinking right now? Mm. Or rock on. You got to rock on. You just got to keep rocking on. Well, we hope that this episode was soothing to you in some way. It was to me. It was it was soothing to me yeah. too. Um, and I, I definitely know for a fact that, you know, again, 10 out of 10 people I ask, this is what they dealt with. So I wish for you peace and um, that if this is something you are dealing with that you, you know. Recognize you're not alone. Yeah, you're not alone and we're here for you. And um, let us know, you know, in the comments of this video or, or, you know, in the podcast, engage with us and let us know how this made you feel. Because I'd love to, I'd love to hear some We feedback. love hearing your feedback. Yeah, we love you. Rock on. <laughs> Namaste.